Okay, so we are here to discuss Naviance. I don't know if you've heard anything. Have any of you heard anything about Naviance yet? Just a little, okay. So at least you've heard it a little. It's okay if you haven't heard it at all. Um, so this is new to us. We started building it late last year and now we are in the implementation stage. So this is a platform for college career and readiness and it's going to touch every student in our district. So we are going to have you help support with that platform. Um, kind of like what we did with Schoology, we trained you to be expert users at it. So we're gonna ask you to be strong users at it as well to help support coaches as they support teachers in your building. Um, do know your guidance counselors, gear up advisors. They have had extensive training. So they are a great source to rely on as well. So today I'm gonna to show you the slide deck I gave to coaches. So you see what they got. So you know how we are asking you to support them. And um, we will be on the website a little bit. I'm not gonna drive on a slide deck the whole time. So it's gonna be a very short piece on the slide deck and then we're gonna get out to the site. So while I'm doing the introduction, if you wanna get set up to do a second monitor or display to a TV in your room, you can go ahead and get that set up to follow along. Um, I think that's it, and I think we're ready to get going. All right, so people say it different ways. It's Naviance, Naviance, however you feel like saying it is the way we will suggest it. Most people say Naviance, so go ahead and roll with it. So the outcomes we have determined to go with this PL, well, that participants will have an understanding of the platform Naviance and be able to facilitate a PL to staff in their building. So this is where you come in, your coach has been trained, you're getting similar training and you're gonna support them as they train staff. So you can help do some troubleshooting for them. Um, participants will be able to log into the website, navigate the basic structure of the website and begin to understand best practices for using this platform with our students. And then the final piece is helping support staff creating curriculum for Naviance because it comes with its full own robust uh, curriculum and then helping teachers implement it. And the curriculum piece will not be on Naviance. That piece will be already on Schoology. It's pre-built and you're gonna help su support teachers on grabbing it and using it. So when I get you into the website, you're gonna see five main pieces on there. Um, you're gonna see self-discovery. These are pieces to help students discover who they are, to help them build their futures within their careers, or even if their career leads them down the pathway of college planning. These assessments look at their traits, their personalities, um, what skills they show, and then it makes recommendations. From there, the assessments easily fall into career exploration. And this is where students can explore the different 16 career clusters, as well as the careers that make up those. They're able to explore what skills they need, what education is required for that career, as well as even start thinking about um, the various skills and salaries that are tied to that career. Then the next piece is if that career needs education, you can start to see the college planning. Students are able to explore colleges. They can um, do virtual tours. They can compare their um, SAT data once they get into high school, compare it to the data of um, what other students are following that are looking at that same college as them. They can even apply right here online for colleges. Um, if you're in high school, I don't know if any of you, no, I don't think any of your high school on here right now, um, but the high school, when they get there for scholarships and college applications, they need teacher recommendations. So they'll be able to do that through this platform as well. The fourth piece is success planning. This is where our teachers come in working with the students as well as the guidance counselors. So this is where um, there's a scope and sequence to go with the curriculum for Naviance. And then those scope and sequences have tasks that roll up into a program, which is essentially your scope and sequence. So basically it's like, oh, today we're gonna take an assessment to learn these traits to then explore these careers. And those are the tasks that students will do. And it's all tracked through Naviance. So most of these tasks, when we get there, realize that teachers just really need to point the students to get there to do it. The students do the work. Very few require the teacher to mark off that the students did. 
And then the final piece is course planning. This is under construction, so more info will come to this later. But this is where students will start to look at what courses we offer in FWCS. Um, they're going to have their graduation pathways, and then they can start making their course selections through here. And it is able to determine if a student has enough credits to take specific classes, because we know how some classes have prerequisites, the program will notice that. So that is all I have for an introduction. That is Naviance, but I want to get you out on the platform to see it from your view. So I'm going to have you go to Clever. Students will access it through here. And I know Clever changed recently. I don't know if any of you noticed it. So you have your teacher pages. So if you go to the district page, you're going to see our FWCS applications, and we're going to select on the Teal Naviance. And this will automatically sign you in. So while you're getting in, I'll kind of talk about the difference for teachers versus counselors. So teachers, for once, actually have a very limited access on the website. Counselors have the full, robust access. They have way more on their home screen. So for once, teachers can go, whew, I have less to do than guidance counselors. So that's a round of applause there. So you have less. You're basically going to have the navigation to find your students, to look at their tasks, and do your letters of recommendation. So the way today is going to go, I'm just going to give you the site overview here, and then we're going to get onto the student side. And then that's all there's going to be today. So then tomorrow when we meet, we'll dive deeper into working with our students because this curriculum, um, hopefully this isn't a bombshell that I'm dropping right here. This curriculum will be going into your homeroom or advisor, advisee, if that's what you call it. So that's why if you did not have a homeroom on your schedules this year, they have now added it. This is where that curriculum will be going. It'll be on a rotation schedule with a couple other items. So in the platform at the top is a blue navigation bar. So this is how we're gonna get through the site. In the very top left, you're gonna see the Naviance icon. This is essentially your home button. Anywhere you get lost in the platform, you can click this button to get back to this screen. Moving to the right, um, on this tab, you hover. On the student side, you click. It's very opposite. I don't know why they programmed it that way. So just hovering, I can see my student roster or search for students. So if I select student roster, it will pull up every student in my school, sorting them by grade. So if you look on the left, you can see I'm sorting right now by eighth grade and that then it goes by alphabet. So I am able to click into each of these students to see their portfolios. Every student has their own unique portfolio. Teachers are able to dive into there. Um, this will typically be used if you're working one-on-one -on -one with the student to talk about their future or just working with them on various things. And there'll be another way we can look at it overall as a group. And that's gonna be part of tomorrow looking at it as a group. Now, if you're looking for a specific set of students, be careful on how you do the searches. Um, they have told us the more filters you add, the higher the chance of throwing out students you actually needed. So they said, be very careful on how you try to filter your students so you don't omit anyone by accident. So then there is this piece called groups. This is the piece we're gonna dive into tomorrow where we can add our students to groups to help us to work with them in the platform. Students are not rostered to us through this program. We have access to all students. And that's where this piece will come in to bring our homeroom kids together to us. So we'll worry about this tomorrow. So moving over to Planner, um, you're gonna have your dashboard as a teacher. This is where you're able to see what's going on with students you work with. We'll dive more into this tomorrow as well. Just realize this is gonna tie back to that scope and sequence and those tasks and program I talk about. So that's where you're gonna see, you can see the tasks that we're assigning throughout your uh, middle school level. Realize that not all of them are assigned to you. So we take these tasks and move them into what's called a program. So sixth grade has a program, seventh grade, eighth grade, and so on. Many of these tasks you're gonna see say recommended, required. 
most are going to say recommended because we know not all students are going to apply to that task. Um, an example would be take an AP course is one that's re um, recommended at the high school level. The reason it's recommended, we all know not all of our students are on the track to go to college after high school, so they probably won't take an AP course. So that's why we recommended it, so it doesn't hurt them if they don't explore AP courses. Um, but then there's other pieces that are required, such as complete October lessons, because that's the curriculum. That piece was required, but for a teacher to mark it, all they have to do is get a student on there and the student makes one or two sentence statement about what they learned. It's hands off for the teacher. They teach it. The students have to say, I did this and this is what I learned. Um, you will see a sign and manage. Don't worry about assigning. No teacher, no coach in the district has to assign a task. The tasks will be assigned to the students at the district level. So we will maintain that so that load will be taken off of buildings. Teachers can just use this piece to manage the tasks. Tomorrow we'll learn about updating tasks in bulk. So you can just do it one time and update the tasks. Here's that course piece. There's our district course catalog. Here's our graduation pathways and then our ability to start making our plans for our courses. So this is that piece that is under construction and we will have PL on that later. So we're not even gonna worry about that right now. You do have the ability to see the scholarships for our district. These are all handled at the district level and assigned to the buildings they need to go to. Navion's even um, brought in the scholarships that are national. So students are able to see all their opportunities to earn scholarships. Colleges, there is a quick list. We did look at what our top schools that students apply to and we made that list to help students look for those colleges easier when they start to explore there. Um, they are able to search for them on the left. Spelling is huge. This program is not very good at guessing your spelling. So if you don't spell a school right, you probably won't find it. So we will have to work with our students on correct spelling. Then we can go over to the careers tab. This is where they can explore the career clusters or even specific careers. You'll see work-based learning. That's gonna be more of a high school piece where they can start to find those internships that we are making available to them. So I'm gonna click into find careers. So it's just gonna give me a running list of every career that they've pulled into the system. I'm able to click into them to start to explore them. Um, I know as you're looking at this, you're like, this platform is very bland, very boring, very blue. Um, that is only on the staff side. They did not put time into making the staff side um, please, uh, pleasing looking or aesthetically looking. Um, they spent all the time and effort on the student side. So I can't wait to show you all this on the student side because it looks way better and you're probably going to spend more time on the student side teaching from it than this side. This side is just more for you to quick quickly look up stuff or find the student portfolio. Um, this stuff looks way cooler on the other side. So I'll wait to really dive into this till we get to the student side. You do have the connections. Um, there's nothing there. Don't worry about if you can't access anything. Um, that's not a big deal because you're gonna communicate with your students through Schoology. So not a big deal that you don't have access to that. So the final piece on the staff side is up here in the top right, you're gonna see the circle with the question mark. This is their help center. They have a um, well-built help center in that you are able to search for any topic or question and you should be able to find an answer. They have built-in GIFs, videos, and they hyperlink to other information. So if we're not, your coordinator is not getting back to you with an answer quick enough, you can start to search for it here. And I know some of you are independent and search for it on your own as well. So that's the staff side in a nutshell. I know that was a quick rundown, but it's pretty basic. Um, you don't have as much as a counselor, like I said. So at this point, we're going to go home. So I'm going to click the Naviance icon. And now we're back home. So I don't know if you noticed there was a giant green button on the first page. I don't know if any of you got click happy and wanted to click it. Well, now's your chance to click it. So go ahead and click it. 
and it's going to take us to the student side. So every user, um, teacher user, I should say, has a demo account and that you're able to view as um, various grades within your level or building. So it should say welcome demo and then your last name. If it doesn't, let me know. Um, if it does look a little plain right here, if you wanna see what it looks like for a sixth grader, seventh grader or eighth grader, you can easily come up here on this toolbar. Right now it's set to demo. Demo is gonna let you see everything on the platform, everything that we offer to your level. But then if I break it down by grade, so if I go to eighth grade, my view is gonna to change to what an eighth grader would see. So we do have certain things turned off for certain grades. So if you wanna see everything, switch to demo. So on this page, I'm just gonna run down the front to show you everything. And then at the top, I'll start to run through that toolbar as well. So as you can already see, it looks way better than that staff side. There's a welcome message. Um, you can't change this welcome message. Um, only the district can. So counselors are gonna help maintain it with us. So don't worry about that. This is just to kind of help guide students through what they're doing. The right side is my favorite. So this is a quick way for students to find things they've hearted in the platform. So colleges they're thinking about as they favorite them, they can quickly access them here. Colleges I'm applying to. So if they have applied to a college or in the process of applying, it'll show up here. So when our 12th graders go to apply, they will request transcripts through here. They will apply to the college here, get their letters of recommendation here. So it's all gonna be in this platform now. And then we have the careers and clusters. So this is when they explore careers. This will be strong in middle school. They can start to heart their various clusters and careers. And then as we get into high school, start looking at scholarships, we can start to put those favorites here as well. So the next two boxes, the left one is our to do's and tasks. These relate to that task or program that tie back to the scope and sequence. Um, so it's gonna show you three tasks. You have way more than three tasks. It randomly selects three tasks. So it's not even gonna show them the proper three tasks they should be on for September or October. So we recommend clicking the see all in my planner button to get the whole list or up here in the top is planner and then they can go straight to their tasks to get the full list so they can go planner tasks which will review that tomorrow or they can go see all in my planner what's new middle school probably won't have as much as high school so colleges that want to visit use this platform as well so all of our high schools have said when they're available to have colleges visit and those colleges could request to sign up through this platform. So it's an automatic process now, and then it shows up here for students to see like, oh, look, St. Francis is coming next week. I wanna make sure I connect with them and they'll be in the media center. So I'll have to make sure to go visit them. So this is a great feature for students. So then the next two, you have the curriculum. There is a curriculum inside this platform, but since our teachers are used to teaching out of Schoology, we're going to continue having them use Schoology because your homeroom or advisor advisee kids are rostered to you and you should have a course on Schoology. If you have teachers on Schoology that don't see their homeroom or their advisor advisee class, please let your coordinator know so we can figure out what's going on. And all of the curriculum is pre-made, literally just have to copy it over from a group into their course and then they just work them through that content maybe help them make sure they did the assessment or go into this platform to complete a task. So the curriculum is pre built So that should hopefully help lighten the load. Then we have document resources. This is for as we work with students, um, like the school profile will go here. Students need this for college applications. So when a file is added for them, it'll go here. Um, if there's a letter of recommendation, that file will be added here as well. Same with their transcripts. Once we get their transcripts in there because they requested one, it'll go there. So the final piece is some helpful links and articles at the bottom. Counselors have told us what they would like to see down here. So here's a quick link back to Schoology. Um, I'm getting ready to apply for 21st Century Scholar. 
that links here. So these are just quick links to other sites. These ones are kind of informational pages. So if you see, I have Career Academy. This doesn't turn on till eighth grade because we know when eighth grade is when Career Academy starts making visits to schools to talk to students. So we put a little page in here with a video or helpful links to explore Career Academy. And then as soon as AMP Lab has information, we'll start to add AMP Lab. So then the final piece is school updates. Right now, this is linking to the school's um, Schoology page. But obviously, since we've started this process, we're now on ParentSquare. So we will be linking a school's ParentSquare page here so families can continue to communicate through there. So that is just the main front site rundown. And then we're going to go through these tabs, which you'll notice that diagram I showed you in the beginning, those tabs are here now. We had them on the staff side, but now we're going to see what it means to the students. So here's the self-discovery. If you notice, I only have three assessments in eighth grade. So those are the only three that they should be taking that year. But if I switch to my demo, I'll be able to see all eight assessments the district has bought for our students to take. Um, these assessments, this one will help them find what career cluster pathway they should look into, um, the career key and career interest profile profiler. They're actually very similar tests. One is just more geared for middle school. One is geared for high school. This will help them determine based on what they're showing for traits and skills, what careers they should explore. Um, then like these ones down here start to show like their studying habits, what kind of person personality they have, and how those tie back to the careers and clusters. This final one, they can only take once. It's a one and done, even yourself. You can take it once and you're done. This one is like overall, it's finding who they are with like their interests in school, their hobbies, what traits they have. This one at the end will start to give them three things that describe them, like I got organized and some other people got adventurous. So then it gave me career choices based on my three top traits and themes. Um, so this one, because it's only allowed once, we do have it currently scheduled in May of ninth grade. So that one middle school does not need to worry about. And we did not wanna give it too early, but we did not wanna to wait too late to give it. And it kind of has to go with that maturity level on when we give it. So these, like I said, sixth grade only has one or two of them. Uh, seventh, eighth grade, you basically take the same ones, just they do it again to keep adding to their careers as they grow. And these will be built into that scope and sequence. So it's gonna naturally fall in the middle of the lessons. So then we have courses. This is that piece that's under construction, but they would go here to explore classes and then eventually make their class choices. Then we come to careers and this is where they can start to explore careers. Um, if you re remember back on the staff side, this is when it was just that big list and I could just tab between the different things. So I'm gonna to get to that same screen on the student side and instead of being in a list, they're now in these card tiles with little images on them. Gives me a brief little description, tells me what education I need, and then the average salary. I'm able to favorite it here, or I can click the title of that career. And then I'm able to dive into it more. So this looks way better than it did on the staff side. So students will just scroll down, reading about the career, seeing what cluster it's a part of, what this job does. And then a really cool feature is there's a map of the United States and as they hover over the states, it will show them the average salary for that career. Because sometimes kids just don't have it in their mind, a realistic salary for a job. So an accountant in Indiana on average makes $65,000. So that was really easy to find. And then they can just keep going down to see the different Holland traits, what majors in college are connected, and then other careers that they might want to pursue as well. And all this is hyperlinked to help drive them to those other places. And that's just not it for this career. I can go into what skills and experience I need. 
I can dive even deeper into the wages. And sometimes there will be events near us that students can go attend for internships that are available, and those will be in here for them to sign up and explore those. Then colleges is starting to get a little more robust because we have research colleges apply to colleges and then the scholarships for our colleges. Um, so when I do my colleges, I can look based on, do I want a four-year program, two-year program, the max I can afford with a grant or a loan, am I wanting athletics or not, do I want sororities, fraternities, I mean, they can get down into all kinds of things of what they're looking for in a college, um, or even in their general area, you can go by Midwest, you can go by the East, the West Coast, um, it's a really great tool for looking but we are going to pull in 11th graders SAT scores into this program. So when they start to look at colleges, they can start to see their GPA compared to other kids in their school or kids applying to that college. So that's a really great tool to see, oh, there's a bunch of kids who are interested in St. Francis and this is where I fall academically compared to them. It won't tell them who they are, but it'll at least say, here you are compared to the average student. So that is all I'm going to show you today. Tomorrow, we will dive into the student planner section, going back to the staff side and learning how our staff are going to really work with this platform and get you seeing that scope and sequence. So if you have questions, you can ask them now. If not, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh wait, hold on, I can't hear you. It might help if I have my sound on. Try it now. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. I hope you liked it. I see you tomorrow. Bye. We'll record this just so we have multiple options. Okay, so to get started, um, we're gonna go ahead and go back to Naviance. So remember, go to Clever, sign in and then choose that Naviance icon from the district side. So today I will be driving from my my side of Naviance. I won't be signed in as a teacher. So mine will look a little different. Um, this will give you an idea of what it looks like for guidance counselors. So theirs does look like this has all these options. So it's similar to yours, but obviously they have a few bells and whistles more than you. Um, you will notice as well today, you have a new option on the blue bar up here. You're gonna see analytics. So I did turn that on. Don't worry about that feature. That's gonna be a PL later, because right now we're worried about implementation versus that tracking piece. So we're gonna do that later. We just wanna do this step first, get people using it, and then we'll pull in the analytics piece. So, and it's only analytics for your, if you're in high school, AA class or middle school, your homeroom. So that's the only piece you have to worry about. So hopefully I gave you enough time to get in. So if you're in, remember we're gonna click that fun little green button that says, click me over here. It says demo Naviant student. So we're gonna click that to get back in the demo side. Okay, so today my demo will look a little more different because I'm signed in as me. So, and I'm at a high school level instead of middle school. So it will look slightly different. I'll have more things available to me as a student because obviously this will be used more in high school than middle school. So yesterday we got through most of this and we just need to get through the planner piece and the about me piece before we go back to the staff side. So if you remember yesterday, when I showed you the rundown of this, I talked about this section showing your tasks that you have. There's only three here, and these three aren't even relevant right now. Um, so most of these three here are actually gonna be due around the end of the school year. So this is why we don't recommend sending students here to find their tasks. So there's two ways to do it. One is they select see all in my planner. But if most students land right here on the main page, we would recommend using planner and then tasks. 
So this is going to take them to their tasks in Naviance. Um, right now, only Wayne High School has them pushed out for PL purposes. They will be pushed out next week to every student in the district. Um, you never have to worry about pushing them out. It's always going to be done at a district level. So hopefully that will take some things off plates. So then because I'm in as a student in Wayne, I'm able to see the various tasks that have been assigned. I can see some are required, some are recommended. So if you look at these recommended, it's explore colleges and their admission requirements. We all know we're not gonna have students who go on to college. So we should not be requiring that they have to do this. So that's why it's going to be recommended. So if that's the pathway they take, they can explore that. But then there are pieces that tie back to the Naviance curriculum that helps them make these decisions for their college career readiness. Those are the ones that are required because that's universal for everyone, no matter what pathway they choose. So I'm just going to click into one. So I'm going to click this post-secondary SMART goal. So this is what a task would look like within a program. So remember, tasks make up a program, and each grade has a program of tasks. So I'm in a 12th grade program, and this is one of my tasks. For students to see what they need to do, sometimes there's descriptions over here. This one doesn't have any. But if you see this pink diamond with the arrow, this is going to tell them what they actually have to do. This is their objective right there. To complete this task, you need to create a goal. And the nice thing about this program is they hyperlink as much as they can. So if students need to take an assessment, it will link them to that assessment. If students need to go explore careers, it's going to give them the link to go explore careers. So for this one, they can literally select create a goal, and it's going to take them to my goals. And they have no goals assigned to them yet, so it's not going to show up here. But if they need to create their goal, they can just hit the plus or the plus on top of the goals. And then once they do it, it automatically tracks it so you don't have to do anything. Most of the tasks are set up to automatically track based on what they do in the platform. So I'm gonna come back to the tasks assigned to me. That's where I was. It just brought me over here to goals. These are in the same area. So coming back, let me shut off my email. It keeps blowing up and I, I'm afraid you can hear it. Okay, so I'm back in my tasks. I'm going to get back in one of my tasks. There is a feature on here called raise hand. Students are able to ask questions. Naviance has told us students will like this platform and more than likely will be on here on their own trying to complete stuff and explore it. Um, so if they do have questions, they are able to ask the question. At high school, all students are assigned to their counselor in this platform. So if they ask a question, their counselor will get notified. So if you don't happen to see the question, they will be notified. In middle school and even a regular high school teacher, we can show you how to see if a student asks a question. So that's a great feature. Any questions over the programs or tasks? Okay, so I'm going to show you one more piece inside the platform. Coming back up to the top of the bar, you're going to see the About Me. So if you click that, it's going to give you another drop down. This is where students will start to build their resume. It's another way to access their goals. Um, there's a quick way to access their portfolio to see what they've done in the program. There's something called a journal. So this is an area where students, parents, and guidance counselors can communicate with each other about a student's CCR path. And then as we get to like 12th grade and students start applying to colleges, files are going to be shared with them in that application process. And those will go here. Middle school and high school will have surveys to take. Um, I know for middle school, there's a transition to middle school survey for sixth grade. It's already created and it will be assigned to them as part of their tasks. So you don't have to worry about completing it. But this is where students can go to see their results. In high school, there are two 
uh, surveys there, they are turned off for the students just because I'm in demo, I can see them. But if I was just a ninth grader, I would not see these. We have to turn them on and we have them scheduled to turn on at the right time. So we're actually gonna go click on the About Me Home. So this is gonna give me an overview of my surveys, my assessments I've taken in the platform. So they're hyperlinked again, so I can go see my results. It's gonna show me what other assessments I have available to take. I do recommend, if you ever have the time, take these assessments to see what they're like. They give valuable information and you'd be surprised how they connect with you today as an adult. So we can look at their post-secondary plans to see what careers or clusters they're interested in. We can look at the colleges they're thinking about. And then here's another way to access their journal. So back at the top, there's also four options here. If you remember, we saw all of these when we click this dropdown. So this About Me Home just kind of ties it all together here. So I'm gonna go to Account next. So this is where um, the student can start to see pieces of their portfolio. Um, we see this and the students' sure <laughs> and the students' portfolio all together. Students see it in two separate things. They see it in account and portfolio. We see it together on our end. So here is their information. It's pulling in from PowerSchool. Um, the academic section. We are working on this. Um, so. For my demo, this is my GPA, but students, their weighted GPA is pulling in as well because we know we need that for college applications. And we are working on adding in class rank because I know that's needed for some applications. And I've heard so far Northrop and Snyder are very competitive on class rank. Don't know about Southside. <laughs> so it's gonna be here, we are going to add it. So I'm gonna go back. So this time I will select portfolio. And so here, this tab up here, if I select one of these, it's just gonna scroll down on the page to that area. Or you can manually scroll and see the various pieces. So if I select career planning, my page is gonna scroll and I can see what I'm working on for career planning. Obviously I haven't done anything, but the more our students do in here, the more that's going to be here for them to see and for you to see on your side. So are there any questions over this area here? So I'm gonna go ahead and exit the demo to get back to my side of Naviance. So I'm gonna show you on your side, if you happen to be working one-on-one -on -one with a student, how to pull up their portfolio. So coming up to the blue bar at the top, we're gonna to go to students and student roster. So yesterday we went into this area and I showed you that you can sort it by grade level. And then within each grade level, it sorts by the alphabet. Remember that the more filters you add, the less students you're gonna see because you're gonna start to filter them out and you never know what some student has in their power school that will filter them out. But you can also today, if you don't wanna use a student, so you can find any student to see, we do have information in there. If you want, you can also look at your demo. So if you're teaching in class and you don't want students to see something, I recommend using your demo. So just search by your last name. I broke the internet. There we go. So your demo that you have, you're able to look at them as a student. So if I look at my demo, I'm in 12th grade. Um, I don't have a counselor, but I can tell you at the high schools, we do have them assigned and it will show up here. So then I'm pulling in information from PowerSchool for my ID number and all this other information. So then here is my academic information. So we are pulling this in. 
groups here in a couple minutes, we're going to learn about groups. So you can see what groups a student is in. And if you look, my demo student is already in two different groups. So students can be in numerous groups and have no idea. And then the login information, this is going to be maintained through Clever, so you don't ever have to worry about working on the username and passwords. So this first page you landed on was just a very generic rundown on the students. But if you notice here on the right, it says a student has a CCR question. So this is one way to see that my student asked a question. So you would only see this if you had worked with the student one-on-one. -on -one. You wouldn't have been alerted, but if I had had a counselor here, they would have been alerted to this. So this is one way, probably highly unlikely for you to find it this way. So here on the left is more, I call them like tabs in a binder. So their portfolio is very big, has multiple layers, um, the piece you might work with the most is CCR tasks. And this is if you're working with a student one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe they've been absent for three weeks, so you're trying to see where they're at, trying to work with them to get them caught up. So I can see the tasks that have been assigned to them. I can see the status on that task when they're due. I can remove it from a student if it was accidentally assigned to them. Let's say I have a student move in November from out of state, so they're brand new, so they miss September, October. I'm able to waive those tasks so they don't have those bogging down their information. So here I was in progress on this task. I can say, hey, what happened? Why would you stop? This one, I can see the question that I had asked, so I'm able to click here and see their question and give them a response and then mark it as resolved. You're also to see what tasks are upcoming and then I'm able to see tasks that are completed. And then I can view the details of those tasks. There are other tabs, if you see them, you can dig into them working with the student because we know sometimes you mentor those students so it's quite all right to dive into there. Um, I know throughout the piece in middle school, careers is gonna be big, exploring that. You're able to click into the, to the careers tab to see what careers the students have explored or favorited. So these will be here for you to see. So I'm gonna go back, no, I'm not gonna go back. I'm actually gonna go to what's called groups. So this is a piece all teachers are gonna have to do because in Naviance, your students are not rostered to you. In Schoology, on your homeroom AA, they are. That's where all the curriculum's going. In here, we're going to find a way to put our students with us so we don't have access to all the students. Because right now, every single one of you has access to every single student in your building, and that's not who you work with. So we're going to go to students and then groups. And so if you look, we already have a bunch of groups made. Most of them are at the district level. So if you look, CA, these are all the programs at Career Academy. Um, your students that go to Career Academy are still tied to your school. We can't tie them at both places. So we're putting them in groups on here for the Career Academy staff to work with them here. We will also probably do that with AmpLab once we get more information from them. But all the others, these are all building ones. Um, here's the one I created. Students do not know if they're in a group and they do not see the name of their group. So if I put learning disability and put my students in there, they would have no idea they are in there. This is just for our side to help us use this program better. So every teacher will need to come select add new group and then they have to give it a code or short name. So we've been recommending maybe your classroom number, maybe your initials, or if you have a really short name, you're able to put it in there. And then give it the full name so you can find it in that list on the left. So like Mrs. Moyer's homeroom. So create whatever it is you want, it's just two simple things, and then select add group. So I've already added a group, so I'm going to go back and find mine. 
So once you add it, it might take a minute to show up here. That's okay. So when you see it, it's right here. Here is mine. So here's that name. Here's those initials or that code. If I don't like the name, I'm not stuck with it. I can change it. I can delete it if I want to just start over. And then I can edit members. So we all need to edit our members. So it filters by grade level. So mine defaulted to 12th grade. If I want to switch to 11th grade, I select here and select 11th grade. But it doesn't change it. I literally have to push the button change to change my rosters. So that's a piece I myself forget to do. So make sure you hit that change. And so you don't have to search for your students. I recommend using control find or control F to start looking for students. And then you would select your student. You can hold the control key and select multiple students. And then I just need to add them over. Once I've made my changes and I'm happy with what, let's say I need 11th grade, how many I have all my 11th graders, I'm able to update membership. And I can have multiple grades in a group. So I don't have to have a group for every grade. I can have one group and put all of my kids in there. So that's all you have to do for the setup. Now that we have this set up, it will help us later to track our students' progress and assign their tasks. So this was just a one-time quick setup. Obviously, if you have students leave or students join, you'll have to come back here and edit your members. So now I'm gonna come to Planner and Dashboard. So this is going to show me the students in my school and how they're doing on the various tasks. So things it can show me are comments they've made, documents they've completed, surveys or questions they've asked. So right here is my demo and I can see that they've asked a question. So I am able to respond to it. Now I can't filter by my homeroom or AA here but I am able to sort by the counselors in my building or the grades. So this is just gonna give you a building overview versus just your group. So to see your group, that's gonna come later when we get to the analytics part. But right now, like I said, we're just wanting people to get comfortable using it, get it set up. We didn't want to overwhelm everyone. So that will come later, bringing it down to your group. But one thing that does happen is sometimes there will be a task that a teacher has to mark completed. I would say about 90 to 95% of the tasks that we assign, either the system marks it complete or the student leaves a comment and that marks it complete. But there's very few instances where it says the teacher needs to mark it complete. So for those, I'm gonna show you how to do it in one try. So you would go to Planner, Assign and Manage. So as I said earlier, you don't have to worry about the assign piece. This is done for you. So you can toggle over here to what's called Batch Update. So then you would select the task that you need to do a batch update on. I'm not sure if there's one that is. I'll do this one. So I just randomly picked a task. You can then sort it by the grades. I wouldn't worry about looking at the counselor, gender, ethnicity. I'd be worried I would omit a student. Actually, get to the left. And then right here in student groups, this is the piece we need. I would go find your group. So I'm Moyer Demo. And then you would select continue. So unfortunately, my two 11th graders have not been assigned a task. I must have only assigned it to 12th graders. So you would normally have all your students listed here that needed that task. You would check mark, the, check mark them 
choose a drop down to say mark is complete and then submit. So it's very easy here to just select all. I want to mark complete and then just submit. So right now that's the site in a nutshell. The main thing is getting those teachers to create their groups and then making sure they know how to navigate various pieces on the platform. But I have one more piece I wanna show you. So now I'm gonna go out to Schoology. So I had told you yesterday, all the curriculum is going to happen on here. It's pre-made, grab and use. So today I'm gonna to show you where to find it so you can start to explore it. So then you can help support your coach in rolling this out in your building. So you're gonna to go to groups and then the integrated teacher resources. And then we're gonna come over here to resources. I don't know if anyone's been on here lately, but if you have, you've probably noticed that we've added a Naviance folder. So in here, you're gonna have the curriculum maps. They are broken apart by middle school, high school. So I will pull up middle school just to give you a kind of look at it. So it all starts out with a high level overview showing you the Naviance and well-being breakdown by the months. If you wanna dive deeper into these to see what exactly I have to do, you can switch to Naviance to really dive into here. But notice that all the months are hyperlinked. So every grade will hyperlink to their grades folder in Schoology to make it easier for teachers. So if I need to go and see what my October lessons are, I can literally click here and it will take me to sixth grade October lessons. So this makes it easier for teachers to move it. So I'm gonna go back to the Naviance home folder. You're gonna notice for every grade, is going to have a smart start because this is brand new, not just to the teachers, but also the students. So we all are going to be learning it together. So we have developed smart start lessons. They are grab and use. This is just the lesson plan overview, but in each grade September folder is literally lessons they can just copy over and use. So we've provided edu protocols. We've provided video. So this video here, if the teacher isn't comfortable explaining what Naviance is and how to navigate, there's a video pre-made for them to use. So there's three lessons to basically learn how to use it, doing a scavenger hunt on the site, and then creating their first goal. Because we have all grades creating an academic goal, so we can start to talk to them about their academic future. So then I literally have a folder for every grade. So if I go into ninth grade, every grade will also have a lesson plan folder. So Naviance has 16 lessons for every grade. So every grade had a lesson description page. I went and grabbed all of those. So we have 9.1, my foundation. So when they go to teach 9.1, they're able to pull up the objectives, what's required, timeframes, and even enrichment activities they could do. So this is just a reference tool for teachers that need that piece. So I'll go back to ninth grade, get out of lesson plans. So right here is my September. I can check it out, see, oh, here's my three lessons. So they can grab each lesson individually or, because I know how they work, they're probably gonna say, why can't I just grab September and move it into my homeroom class? They can absolutely do that. They would just check the folder, select the gear, add to course. And I know at high school, you probably have four AAs. You have nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, so I would select, like if this was nine, 10, 11, 12, I would select all four and then go put it in your Naviance folder. And then you would just hit add and it'll add it to your course. 
I will say, so if I look in October, sometimes there are assessments that will need assigned. So you'll have to click into it and say, here's the due date, here's the grading category. So it's just a quick setup, just like any normal assessment. And I know I'm buttoned up on time, but I have one more piece. So with this being new and every teacher and every coach running a homeroom or AA, we're running into pages might all look different. So we do have a consistency template for homeroom. Don't freak out, it's super simple. So if you, where we normally find our templates, it's in there. We're literally asking if you're doing well-being lessons and have stuff to share, have a folder for well-being and put the content in there. Um, have a Naviance folder and dump your month folders into there. So when you copy over that September folder, I would put that September folder in here. If you do any boosters based on code of conduct and you have stuff you need to share, I would put it in there for students. That way you don't get a very mumbled jumbled page. So just try to work with teachers to try to create an organized homeroom AA page. So I know that was a lot, but I will share the slide deck with you and then I'm gonna be here for questions or I'm gonna let you go. All right, so yes, I'm gonna give you the slide deck so you have it. I don't know if your coach has shared it with you or not, but if you have questions or they have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Eric, Sarah, Rick, or I. We're happy to help and get you going. But beyond that, you're free to go. Thanks for coming.